Good morning, folks. How are we all doing? New week. Hope everyone's doing good. Hope we're on a good weekend. So today, morning glory sessions, I want to talk about copycat coaching. And what do I mean by copycat coaching? Well, why is it? Why do you train the way you do? And why is it that if you walk into 10 different gyms, you're probably going to be given the same sort of exercises regardless. Now, what I mean by this is I have experienced, a lot of experience coaching and I have a lot of experience with people telling me their own personal stories about their experiences with being coached. And one of the things that tends to happen these days is you come into the gym and you're put into a group, let's do a small group training, the type of gym primals in, primal offers. You put in the group and it's like you're given a barbell and you're you're going to do deadlift, bench press, shoulder press, back squat and bent over row. Because they're the big ones that most people are going to be doing. And uh, the, 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 the big power exercises, shall we say. And the reason this is happening is what a lot of people don't seem to realize is um, when you pay for a PT or you join a gym, and a lot of the times, and listen, this is just how it is. I'm not, I'm not beating anyone or putting anyone down. A lot of times is the coach that you're classifying as the expert has literally done maybe six, 12 weeks of personal training court teaching. And they're now certified personal trainer. They can open their own gym and they can, they're then qualified to take you through exercise programs and you're going to look at that person as the expert because you're entrusting them you're paying the money so you're already psychologically you're already in a, 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 a zone or an area where you believe that these people are more knowledgeable than you therefore what they say you're going to trust sadly 12 weeks a year maybe even two years is not really I'm not you haven't really accumulated enough experience enough uh knowledge and enough um coaching like in the trenches coaching experience to be able to classify yourself as an expert and for a lot of people when i've experienced what i see when i a lot of the members come in the uh, prime the first time 90 percent of them do not get handed a barbell there's going to be some that you can see on as soon as they start you know moving you know their experience you know they've done the, the weights before you know they've got experience with the barbell and you're pretty secure in allowing them to do things maybe if you tweaks here and there but apart from that their, their foundational level of knowledge and uh, movement is sound for the vast majority of people like that i coach they have no business being under a barbell they really don't and for a lot of people the barbell is probably going to hinder their progress there are other ways there are more intelligent ways of training people that are going to get them to be using the barbell and get, getting the making the gains the barbell can offer a lot faster by literally avoiding the barbell and i use them in uh if you're on facebook or you're watching me on facebook you can read the article twitter or instagram you'll see it later but um i use the back squat as an example back back 100 years ago we were a lot more active today in the, the life we live today we have a very sedentary lifestyle the vast majority of our time is spent either sitting or lying down. Very minimal amount of our 24 hours on daily basis is used to be active, to walk about, especially considering 100 years ago, what would it have been like? Our grandparents, would have been, what they had been like activity-wise. So their mobility and their, their core strength would have been a lot better. Today, we've got a lot of Instagram. We've got a lot of uh, Facebook. And we've got a lot of influencer-type trainers who are putting out the sexy, cool shit that, you know, people think that's what the fitness industry is about and that's what we should be doing. So you see a lot of trainers, young trainers who are just out of the industry looking for inspiration, looking for guidance. So they latch on to these personal, these influencers that are pretty good in their own right, a lot of them. But the exercises they're showing are not probably designed for beginners because the beginner exercises aren't really sexy. They don't really get the likes. They don't really get the following. But for the vast majority of people, the vast majority of PTs out there who are going to be training people, beginners, untrained individuals are going to be their demographic, their target market. And for a lot of those people, the barbell 
is probably six months down the line, maybe not that much, but probably on average about six months down the line before they're using the barbell to its full potential, maybe longer. Like when I train people in Primal, they get, they're they given a light kettlebell and doing goblet squat, and they're going to do goblet squats. They're going to do goat bag swings. They're going to do hip thrusts. They're going to do push-ups. They're going to do um, single arm, half kneeling shoulder press with a kettlebell or a dumbbell. They're going to be doing all these other exercises Bar the bar, bar the barbell, bar the barbell, because simply the barbell is too much. The barbell is twenty kilo. Well, on, on the, most barbells are twenty kilos. Because you got fixed bars, and the problem with the barbell is it's fixed. So, like, if I've got a dumbbell, if I've got a single arm kettlebell press or a dumbbell, I can move my arms this way, that way. I can I can find a way that allow me to press without injury. A barbell is very fixed. It goes up and it goes down. If I've got any impingements in my shoulders, if I've got lack of mobility in my shoulders, I don't have much grace to move and to, to get out of that position. So I, the, the the single arm work for me and the single leg work, the single side of stuff is always a precursor to the barbell. And I think this is where a big mistake is made in a lot of um, the industry and a lot of trainers. And then... Sadly, a lot of the people, the lay people out there, they're the ones that get that suffer because they're the ones given being given exercises that aren't suitable for their um, current physique, current stage of fitness. So we need to start thinking, you as as, a, as someone who's paying someone to get them in shape, you need to start asking yourself: Is the is the trainer you're you're seeking out here? Is he the right person for you? And I don't want to sound like I'm hitting on the young trainers or the inexperienced trainers. But ultimately, the way the society, the way society works now, there is no real differential between a good trainer and, and a shit trainer based on price. It used to be that a personal trainer who was high level, someone who was well respected, would charge 50 quid to 100 quid for a PT training session. And they'd probably charge about 100 to 140 for the small group. Now you've got young trainers coming out six, eight weeks into the, into the industry and they're also copycatting the high level coaches. And, and because people don't know the difference, there's people paying for them. Therefore, these people are getting, the, the, the trainers are ripping their clients off and the clients are getting ripped off and they're not getting the, they're not getting the 70, 80, 100 pound worth um, coaching that they should be getting. And this is a problem. So then the industry's be given, the industry's then building a bad reputation. It's being, I can see it being damaged a lot, so it can. Um, and it does annoy me. It does annoy me to be honest with you because it's something that I've been. This is I've been involved in coaching since I was fifteen. I've been coaching in some sort of capacity from fifteen. Started water polo, so coaching's in my blood, and I can see this. Then I listen. It's not that I want to really beat down on the young trainers, inexperienced trainers, but the reality is, if you're a young trainer or you're an inexperienced trainer, your goal should be to accrue as much knowledge as possible. And if you're going to a gym. If you're if you're opening a gym and you're charging your clients 140, let's say 140 pound for your small group training, then you should be investing the same amount per month as you're asking your clients to pay to improve your own coaching. But I don't see a lot of that happening. I don't see a lot of young coaches paying the money they're asking their clients to pay to invest in their own coaching. Or if they do, they're sticking to a local trainer who's maybe a wee bit higher than them, not, and they're never really reaching out and like expanding their own knowledge and their, their own levels of coaching ability. And this is something that I feel is really holding the industry back and it's damaging the reputation of the industry. So as a as someone who's wanting to look, as someone who is maybe in their 40s, man or woman, and you're wanting to get back into training, if you're walking to the gym and you're being given a barbell to squat under or a barbell to lift deadlifts, and you haven't went through the journey of understanding why you're doing what you're doing and being explained the reasons why this is happening and why you're not using the ex another bit of tool because of whatever. Like when I you come into the primal, I will give you a kettlebell and I will only let you lift a kettlebell with a deadlift until I know your technique is right. And the reason I do this is because a lot of my clients. They've got back problems. And if I see a small, if I see a problem being exposed with a 16 kilo kettlebell, I know that problem is going to be exasperated by a 40 kilo deadlift in the barbell or a 100 kilo deadlift by the barbell. And I know to address that. There are a lot of my clients 
don't ever go near a barbell. We just don't. We adapt the program for them because they're not ready for the barbell. And maybe they'll never will be. One of my clients, James, he's strong and he's fit and he's my age, but he's got disc issues. So give them a barbell squats madness. Give them a deadlift. It's just stupidity. Because it's just, yeah, he's probably capable of doing 50 kilo, 60 kilo, 70, 80, 100, whatever. But there is going to come a point where I put too much weight in the bar. And that weight is going to be the, the factor that causes the injury. So why do that? The idea of training, the, the whole purpose of your tra- behind your training is to improve yourself, to make you a better version of yourself. So for a lot of your clients, a lot of people out there, the barbell is not the right tool for that job. The job of getting you stronger and fitter and better than you currently are. The kettlebell might be a better option. A dumbbell might be a better option. A machine might be a better option. Body weight might be a better option. You just And this is where the art of coaching comes into full effect. A coach, regardless if it's got two clients, one client, 20 clients, they should be able to be at a level where they can handle the number of members they've got. Like if you come into Primal, I am pretty confident, a group of 12, 15 people, I will be able to give every one of them the level of attention required to get them their goals. That's through the years and years of coaching I've ever accrued, gives me that ability. But someone who's maybe in a year, Six weeks, that would be totally overwhelming for them. They'd be lost, they'd be out of their depth, and they wouldn't be able to handle that. But that doesn't mean they can't get there, but it just means they have to take the time, just like someone has to take the time to build up the muscles and the ability to deadlift 200 kilo. A coach has to build up the time and ability to be able to coach more members at the same level they can give their quality coaching to maybe just one. And like just like training, it can't be rushed. It has to be accrued over time, and that cannot um, you can't hit the fast forward button in that, sadly. But for a lot of people, like for like I'm using the squat as the example, the goblet squat for 90% of the people I coach is the only exercise, the only squat exercise they're ever going to really need to build a strong core. If you have a goblet, and here's the other thing, a barbell, the weight's centered on your back. The weight's going pushing down, up and down, up and down, okay? Now, obviously, the, the angle you push your body at and the, the angle you go here in comparison to where the center line is, is going to make a difference to where the weight affects you. But a goblet squat held here means that it's not actually in the center line. It's more in front of you, meaning your core has to work harder. And for a beginner, core strength is more important than the weight you're lifting. The ability to squat safely, the ability to hold your body in the correct position and put your core under pressure. Obviously, you're holding more weight, so your legs won't be working anyway. But if you have not got the ability to squat, say, 50% of your body weight for about 10 reps on a goblet squat, you don't need to be under a barbell. And for a lot of you guys out there and girls, being under the barbell is going to put you at more risk than you need to be put under. And ultimately, you're trying to get, like I said, you're trying to build your, you're trying to use this weight to improve your everyday life. So if you're lifting weights that are putting you at risk of injury every day, that's not improving you. That's stupidity. And sadly, there are, we're in a world of uh, competition, in the, in the industry, in the in the gyms, do you know, everyone, even though we tell you that, well, I'm always telling you that the only competition is yourself, it's human nature to compete against the guy beside you. Sorry, let me take my coffee. Shit, that's one. So it's, it's, it's human nature to want to compete against other people or be better than that guy or use that person you're sitting beside or standing beside as a benchmark to where you should be. But... That's not necessarily true. Like Gareth, the guy I used to train, used to train in Primal, one of my coaches used to train in Primal. He's a, I call him Quadzilla. His quads are huge. He's 25 years old. If I'm standing beside him, trying to compete with his back squat, I'm an idiot. Because me allowing myself to get sucked into that race is going to end up with me with a bad back or a fucked hip. Whereas Gareth's more than capable of doing that. And that's the problem. We, we we focus so much on other people. And then we have we have coaches who haven't got that confidence and their ability yet, the coach, who don't yet, who are still in the position where they want to give the clients what they want because they want to keep their members. And that, that's, that leads into dangerous territory of allowing the client to do something they're not yet ready for because you're fearful of holding them back. But giving the client what they want is not always the best option. Giving them what they need is the option you need to go for. But finding a way of explaining to them that what they're doing is basically the equivalent of this. 
I thought you threw in your you're coming to the the world of giving them what what they want and need, which is what you need know, a coffee, so the I so the I mean. Um but it's giving them what it's it's giving them the, exactly what they want and need, but they're now no longer in that mindset of competing against their other guy or feeling like a failure because they're not doing X, Y, and Z, the rest of the group. And that's something that I I I, I I pride myself on when when you come into primal, you always are told the reason why you're doing the exercise, and you're given the pathway to understand that this could be you could end up where these guys are, or you may not. But this is the reason why you're not, and this is the reason why I don't think it's the best option for you. And if you're if you're able to then understand that, then you're free to you're you're freeing your mind from the bullshit. And the, the comparison trap that I find a lot of people get themselves, get themselves into. And this is something that's massive in the industry. I don't understand. Like, yes, the deadlift is a fucking awesome exercise. It's my favorite exercise on the planet. I love nothing more than pulling 200 kilo of a floor. It makes me feel awesome. But I can't do it anymore. But what I can do is I can do a hip thrust. So I bought a load of hip thrust from bars and hip thrust from machines because I realized that I can't do it. There's a lot of other clients can't do it. And these members and myself are still able to build the glutes that we need to build to keep our lives going the way we're going and keep ourselves ticking over. But it's removed the need to, or the desire to do deadlifts. Well, actually, that's not a lie. That's a lie. I always want to do deadlifts. I don't want to get back to the deadlifts. But I have to accept that right now I can't. But just because I can't do something doesn't mean that I need to focus on that. What I should, what me people need to walk into the gym, realize and go, okay, this isn't for me at the currently, or this isn't me just, this isn't for me because of the injuries I've got or my spine or whatever it is. But if I focus on that, on what I can't do, I'm then taking away my focus on what I can do. Um, one of my members just talking today, and where that's why this yeah, this whole conversation came up, was his back was sore because squatting. Now he has got back issues, so. If he, if he focuses on back squats, he's going to end up getting in that race where he's going to get injured. But we can do goblet squats. We can do double bell kettlebell squats. We can do body weight split squats, body weight Bulgarian split squats. We can do kettlebell and dumbbell loaded split squats. There are a multitude of different squats, sissy squats, the, the leg extensions. There are 100,000 exercises that we can do that are going to produce similar results to the guys and girls who are doing the back squats. But that person has got themselves to the same, a same, a same finish line, but without the risk. And that, as a coach, is what my job is. My job is to give you what you want, but find a way of giving you, of doing it, of, or incorporating what you need. So what you need is strong glutes. What you want is to be able to do back squats, but I can't do that, but we can do split squats. We can do Bulgarian split squats. We can do a, a whole lot of other exercises that are going to allow you to build the same level of quad, same strength, the same ability for your everyday tasks, but in a way that's going to allow you to continue training year after year after year. And when you get to your 40s, you get to your 50s, you need to get in your head. You're no longer training for the photo shoot image. You're no longer training for the Instagram likes that the 20-year-olds do. You're training in your 40s so that you're allowed, so you enable yourself to train in your 50s. You're training in your 50s so you can continue training in your 60s. And that means adapting. That means accepting where you are. And that means that swallowing the ego and accepting that you're um, you're no longer the guy or girl you were in your 20s is a crucial part of development. It's a of evolution. You know, you're evolving and we can. We can train safely right through. I know guys that deadlift and squat in their eighties, but they were, they, they, but they've, they've they've built a foundation level of strength and mobility that allows them to keep doing that. And if you're if you're like a a casual trainer, shall we say, if you're just a normal guy, nine to five, you own a business, whatever, you have kids, whatever, and you just want to be fit and you want to be stronger. For everyday life, you don't want to die when you're in your 50s and 60s. You want your sort of future forecast and you want to be around your kids in your 80s, 90s. Well, then you've got to hold on to that belief and ask yourself, is the training you're doing getting you, allowing you to develop that point? Or is it maybe holding you back? Is it putting you at risk? Is it prevent, potentially going to be the reason why you don't get the training in your 60s and 70s? Are you going to do yourself such a bad injury that training becomes almost impossible? And then you've got to then you're going to the realms of well you're training for ego, you're not training for 
for um for benefit there and for improving your body, improving your overall life. And it's something that I think it's something I really focus on massively in Primal. All my members get the lecture from me and the they explain to why they can't do it. And if I if I don't want someone doing something, I explain to them this and this is the reason why I don't want you doing it. Some of the guys want to do it. Sometimes I go, okay, if you want to do it, it's your body, your life, but understand that I am not going to be held responsible because I've told you the reason why you're going to get injured. A lot of them don't get injured. Some of them occasionally do, and it's like I try to warn you, but what can you do? Adults are adults, they're going to be adults since their body, their life, their choice. But um, yeah, maybe a lot of trainers out there should consider should consider um you should maybe you should realize that you're never just because you're um just because you're qualified as a PT doesn't mean that you stop learning. You know, your 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 PT certificate is basically a bit of paper that says I have met I have reached the minimal standards. And from that, that's your that's your foundation level. Just like someone who can maybe do the five movements, the Dan John five movements safely, they've reached their minimal level. They've now got to start progressing onwards. And the same, you should never continue, you should never stop learning. You should always be pushing because the the more tools in your toolbox, the more ability you're going to have to fix everyone else's problems. And guys and girls out there who are looking trainers and looking uh, to be coached, spend time finding the right coach for you. I know that your friend will say, oh, this guy I'm training, he's amazing, he's brilliant. But he mightn't be brilliant for you. Your, your friend might be in a different place where you're at. And just jumping in to a, a gym who's going to give you high-intensity workouts, when the high-intensity workouts is the last thing you need, it's probably going to be the stupidest thing you can ever do. Spend time finding the right coach for you. Um, be prepared to invest a bit more than you feel comfortable with because those coaches are going to be, the, the guys you pay a bit more, charge a bit more, well, not always, but they'll usually have justification for charging that amount of money and you're probably going to get better results. Anyway, I will leave it there today and I will speak to you all tomorrow. Have a great day and see you later.